Okay, this is student notes 12.6 symmetry. And the first thing we're going to do is define what symmetry is. Okay, symmetry is if, uh, when a figure can be folded or reflected on top of itself. show you a picture of an image that has symmetry. This is an isosceles triangle and each one of these sides is congruent. So if you were to fold it vertically it would have symmetry. And the line that you fold it over is called the line of symmetry. We're not going to do this definition here so you can cross it out. A line of symmetry is just a line of reflection. Or it's where you can cut the image in half. So our line of symmetry here would go vertically the, through the top and the bottom of the triangle. If we tried to cut it horizontally, it would not cut the image in half because the top part would be smaller than the bottom part. So this only has one line of symmetry at this point. Okay, so let's look at these next few shapes. We're going to see how many lines of uh, symmetry each one of these shapes has. Okay, here's a triangle. Looks like an equilateral triangle, so you can cut it through the top vertice, through the bottom left, and the bottom right vertice. So this triangle has three lines of symmetry. Here's your square, vertical line of symmetry. Let me read you that one. A horizontal line of symmetry. And then also lines of symmetry that cut through the diagonal. So the, this one has four lines of symmetry. This one had three, this one has four. Okay, now let's look at the, this is a one, two, three, four, five-sided figure. So this is a pentagon. Let's see how many lines of symmetry this guy has. One, two, three, four, and five. So it goes through each vertex. So this one has five lines of symmetry. So you should be seeing a pattern here. Um, the last one is a hexagon. And let's try it. One line of symmetry, two, three, four, five, and six. So this has six lines of symmetry. Okay, so let's fill in the chart now. With our three-sided triangle where all the sides were congruent, it had three sides, and our number of lines of symmetry was also three. Our four-sided square, four sides, it had four lines of symmetry. Our pentagon has five sides. It had five lines of symmetry. Our hexagon has six sides, and it also has six lines of symmetry. So basically, the pattern is however, how, however many sides there are is however many sides um, lines of symmetry it has. The trick here is that it has to be a regular polygon. which just means that all the sides have to be the same length. If they're not the same length, then this rule does not apply. Okay, we're going to say B and C for class. So turn on the back. Example 1 asks us 
to tell whether each figure has a line of symmetry. If so, draw all lines of symmetry. Okay, just for right now, we're just going to look at example B, which is a giant B. How many lines of symmetry does this guy have? Well, you can't use what we did on the last page because it doesn't have a number of sides that we can count. Plus, all the sides are different lengths. But what you can do is think about a reflection. Where would we draw a line of symmetry where we would reflect the figure on top of itself? Okay, if we tried to draw a vertical line of symmetry, this would not work because if you were to fold this curve over, there's not a curve on this side. So that line does not work. The only line of symmetry that B has is horizontally because this would reflect up on top of itself. So yes, this does have a line of symmetry, but there's only one of them, and it's the horizontal line. Okay, we're going to save A and C for class. So now let's start talking about rotational symmetry. It's a little bit different than an actual line. So we're actually rotating the figure. So a rotational symmetry is um, a figure that when rotated... becomes the same image. Okay, our rotation though has to be less than 360 degrees because obviously if you rotated it 360 degrees it'd be all the way back to itself in the original place. So in order for it to be rotational it has to rotate maybe 90 degrees or 180 degrees and be the same image that it was from before. Okay, the angle of rotational symmetry is the smallest angle a figure can be rotated to coincide with itself, to become itself again. Okay, so let's actually take a look at this. Example two, give the angle of rotational symmetry and order of rotational symmetry of the square shown below. Okay, so we have a square, it has four sides. So how many degrees would I have to rotate it to get the square to look like a square again? Well, if you rotate this point from here to here, it would be a square again from here to here, then from here to here, and then from here to here. So because um, this has four exact um, same length sides, you can take 360 and divide it by four, and it will give you your rotational symmetry, your angle of rotation. 360 divided by four is 90. So if you were to turn this square 90 degrees, it would be the same figure again. You would see a square on top of itself. So the angle of rotational symmetry for this square is 90 degrees. We're going to talk more about the rotational symmetry on in class um, tomorrow. So let's save example 3 for class. Also, we're going to save plane symmetry and symmetry about an axis for class as well. So we are done with notes and I will see you tomorrow.